Hey y'all, I, Rick Sky here, back again with another tankless water heater video. And within this video, I'm going to explain how to size your tankless water heater. Now I'm going to break this down in a very simplistic fashion. If you find this video to be helpful, please consider sending me a super thanks. You can find that thanks button down below, not required, but deeply appreciated if you do. And then also if you're shopping for a tankless water heater, please consider expanding this video's description and then click the link there to find where to order it online. Thanks for your support, not required, but deeply appreciated. So let's go ahead and jump right in and we're gonna break this down into what I feel is very easy to understand terminology. <clears throat> now to preface this video, if you go out to your turnkey installer and say, hey, I wanna install a tankless water heater, they are going to nickel and dime you like you wouldn't believe. So all the due diligence that one can do up front is an opportunity to probably save a ton of money. So as far as sizing a tankless water heater is concerned, first of all, write down how many bathrooms do you have in your house? And when I say bathroom, I mean, a, you know, you got a shower in there. How many showers do you have in your house? Okay, write that down. Okay, how many bathroom sinks do you have in your house? Write that down. How many kitchen sinks or sink do you have in your house? Write that down. So we've got kitchen sink, we've got showers, we've got uh, bathroom sinks. So those are some of the basics. Now, <clears throat> you know, obviously <clears throat> with a lot of uh, washing machines and dishwashers, those are probably gonna use hot water too. So factor that in if you plan to do dishes or wash your clothes around the time of, you know, doing something else like taking a hot shower. So now looking at the, it's called GPN, GPM, golf, Papa, Mike, GPM, gallons per minute. That's the flow rate of the faucets. That's the flow rate of the shower. Now what you can do is you can get a bucket and you can expand this video's description and then click the link there to find where to order a bucket online. But you can turn the water on in the kitchen sink in the shower, in the bathroom sink, you can have that empty bucket underneath. And as soon as you turn that water on full blast, you can start a timer. You know, go into your iPhone uh, clock app and go to timer and set a timer. So as soon as that water's on full blast, that faucet and the bucket's underneath there, boom, start timer immediately and see how long it takes to fill that bucket, to fill an entire gallon within that bucket. And that's the gallons per minute. So if it takes, if it takes uh, one minute, or if it takes, if it takes one minute to fill a gallon, then that would be a one gallon per minute flow rate. Now I'm going to break this down by type, and these are these are estimates again. If you want to, if you want to fine tune it, get that you know get a bucket like the one I linked within this video's description, and get you a timer and uh, time it. But typically a kitchen sink is anywhere between one to 2.2 gallons per minute flow rate. A bathroom sink is typically, and I use the word typically because not every faucet's the same, but it's typically between one gallon per minute and 2.2 gallons per minute also. Now a shower, this is where you're probably gonna notice the biggest uh, difference. A shower can go anywhere typically between 1.8 gallons, gallons per minute and around 2.5 gallons per minute. But if you're like me and subscribe and check out my separate video, how to, you, how to remove a shower head flow restrictor, if you don't like that water pressure gimped and you took that flow restrictor out or somebody else took it out or you know maybe the old shower head you have does not have a water flow restrictor in it, then the, then the flow rate for the shower head could potentially be as much as five gallons per minute. So I definitely encourage you to try the bucket test, like I mentioned, you know, start the timer, see, it, see how long it takes to fill a gallon. I highly recommend doing that for the shower, especially if it's not a brand new, you know, if you bought a brand new shower head, a lot of those shower heads, you can look on the packaging or the product itself, and it'll often say, you know, 1.8, GPM or 2.2 GPM or 2.5 GPM. 
but that that's written on the physical shower head is assuming that the shower head has not been modified. Modified meaning someone taking out the water flow restrictor. So even though a shower head may say 1.8 gallons per minute, if someone's removed the water flow restrictor, that shower head's probably gonna be pumping out a lot more than 1.8 gallons per minute. So these are the basics. These are, you know, what you've done so far, you've identified, okay, how many bathroom sinks do I have? How many kitchen sinks do I have? How many showers do I have? So you've got the, the estimated gallons per minute for each of those faucets. You know, faucet or shower head, doesn't matter. Now what you gotta do is consider a worst case scenario. So only you know your home environment. You know, how many people live in your home, when people take, typically take a shower, when people typically wash dishes in the kitchen sink. So what you wanna do here is determine, you know, a typical week, okay, you know, I may shower at 5 p.m., my daughter may shower at 3 p.m., and my wife may shower at 8 p.m. So if there's typically a staggered shower pattern, the shower pattern is gonna be the heaviest hitter in this pot because as, as you just saw, or as you just heard rather, the shower is, uh, is the, especially if it's unrestricted, is the thing that can suck the most gallons per minute. And also the shower is the most important because when people are showering, they typically don't want the water to become, whole, to become cold while they're taking a shower. So for that reason, it's super important to size your tankless water heater appropriately. So let's say there might be a situation where two people are showering at the same time, okay? So let's say there may be a situation where three people are showering at the same time. Now obviously, if you only have three showers in your residence, it's unrealistic to believe that, that there would be more people showering. Than, I mean, there's only three faucets, three shower heads. So looking at that, let's say worst case, you had three showers, three people showering at the same time, and let's say they were all a 2.2 gallon per minute shower head flow rate. So three times 2.2 is 6.6. .6. So even with three people showering at the same time, that's 6.6 .6 gallons per minute. So if you wanted to uh, say turn on the kitchen sink, which may go up to 2.2 gallons per minute, 6.6 .6 plus two 7.6, 8.6, 8.78. So in that scenario, if you got a nine gallon per minute or greater tankless water heater, you're, you're probably gonna be in a pretty reasonably excellent situation because again, that's assuming that all of your showers are in use at the same time. Typically, that's probably not gonna happen, but you wanna protect yourself so that if the worst case scenario arrives, you know, maybe you've got three showers, but maybe it's just you that lives in the house. But what about when you have guests? What if all the guests happen to take a shower at the same time? In that scenario, you would still want a tankless water heater that's capable of supplying hot water to all three showers concurrently, plus someone in the kitchen washing dishes in the kitchen sink. So factor all of that in. Now, I'm not posting this video like this to encourage people to unnecessarily upsize or tankless water heater. Now, there's, there's a lot of things that come into play if you oversize. Number one, the larger, uh, the more powerful uh, tankless water heaters, there's typically a higher price associated with those tankless water heaters. Also, a more powerful tankless water heater is probably gonna consume more gas. In my case, I've got natural gas, and you can find it linked within this video's description. But, you know, if you're using an electric tankless water heater, the larger, uh, the, the tankless water heater that's rated for more gallons per minute is probably gonna cost more. It's gonna cost more for the unit and it's probably gonna cost more for the monthly utility. So take that into concern. You know, it's like, well, you know, I'm Mr. Rich dude or I'm Mr. Rich girl. I got bling, bling, you know, millions of bucks, man. You know, if you think you're cool like that and you got all this money, it's still stupid because you're throwing money at something, even if money's not an issue, you're throwing money at something that's, that's probably never gonna be utilized because you've oversized your system. So for that reason, I would, you know, I wouldn't over, I mean, I would size it to the worst case 
And worst case, if you're pretty tight with the way you size it, I mean, how many times a year do you have that many guests at your house at the same time? And what's the probability that during that time that all those guests are going to shower at the same time and expect a hot shower at the same time? So, you know, don't go crazy and overspend. And that's what a lot of turnkey installers will try to get you to do. They're going to try to get you to and subscribe and check out my separate video within this tankless water heater video playlist where I explain how to install a tankless water heater affordably because I'm going to within that video it's about an hour long I go through many of the tactics that tankless water heaters installers that tankless water heater installers often apply to try to make themselves more money and to try to nickel and dime the customer with with extra labor with extra pipe other materials things like a recirculation pump. And anyway, check out that separate video for that. But, oh, you can hear my tankless water heater it just came on, hear it? So I love about these things, man, they're so quiet. But yeah, the thing about a tankless water heater, if you just do that, you know, look at where you live, calculate the number, add, get you a piece of paper, digital paper, you know, your notes app in your iPhone, whatever, write down the number of each type of sink, the uh, each type, you know, shower, kitchen sink, shower head, uh, bathroom sink, and then the estimated gallons per minute flow rate for each of those. And like I said, if you've got time, get a bucket like I've got linked within this video's description. I mean, it's cheap. Get that, go to each one of your faucets, have your iPhone or your Android and your timer app, and as soon as you turn that water on full blast, hit timer and get an exact uh, gallons per minute flow rate. Keep in mind, that could always fluctuate over time if, if the city provided water, you know, maybe there's a pressure difference or something. I mean, who knows? I mean, nothing's 100% accurate, but you can be extremely accurate if you do the bucket test. It only takes you, you know, take you a half hour or so, depending upon how big your house is. Take you a, take you a half hour or so and do that and have 100% peace of mind that you're not just going by the GPM the gallons per minute flow rate that's on each of those faucets, each of those shower heads. So if you do all this up front, you're an educated tankless water heater consumer. And then at that point you can say, okay, worst case scenario, you know, maybe I'm gonna run, I'm gonna run at 6.2 gallons per minute of hot water. In that case, that tankless water heater guy like I got behind me, and you can expand this video's description and click the link there, is more than appropriately sized in my opinion. And it's available in other sizes too, so expand this video's description and click the link there. And I bought this on my own, did not buy it through the installer. I was very clear when I made contact with the installers, you know, hey, I do you install customer provided tankless water heaters? Some of them said no. I said, okay, thanks for your time. And they go, who do we, we want to try? No, I don't want you to sell me anything. I know what I want because I've done my due diligence. I've gotten the best price for the hardware and I know that it's properly sized for my residents. So, uh, you know, get that, get that tankless water heater that's appropriately sized, comfortably sized, not excessively sized. You know, that's the biggest thing. Don't go overboard. Even if money's no issue, don't go overboard. It's just stupid. So, uh, I hope this video helped. Again, this is just how to size a tankless water heater. Subscribe, ring that bell, and check out my separate video within my tankless water heater videos playlist where you're watching this that's how to install a tankless water heater affordably. Because once you've done your due diligence, you've got the numbers on paper, and you've got this tankless water heater, or whichever one you wanna go with, and again, expand this video's description and click the link there. Because if you buy this one, it's awesome, I like it. You can get it in different sizes and it helps to support my channel if you choose to shop through my links. But, uh, you know, once you've got that, then you're excited getting ready to get this thing installed. So, you know, don't just size your water heater and assume that when you make that phone call to find that installer, that they're not going to try to rip you off. So now that you've watched this video, you're like, thanks Irish guy, maybe you've tossed me a super thanks, maybe you've shot my link and bought a tankless water heater like the one I use. Maybe you hadn't done any of that, but even if you don't want to do that, that's fine. Your support's appreciated, but I highly encourage you to subscribe, ring that bell, and check out how to install a tankless water heater affordably. Because if you don't take that step, you're going to be arrogant and you're gonna make initial contact with that tankless water heater installer, and they are probably going to nickel and dime, nickel and dime, nickel and dime, and this is gonna become a money pit for you. So congratulations, you've taken the first step, and that's learning how to properly size a tankless water heater. 
But if you stop there, you're potentially setting yourself up to lose a ton of money. So I hope this video helped. Subscribe, ring that bell, and check out all of my Tankless Water Heater videos. I'm just a normal dude here at the Appalachian Ocean, just trying to save money. And uh, that's in the form of the initial equipment, the installation, and then also the monthly energy consumption. Because a lot of people don't consider when they make an appliance purchase, whether it's a tankless water heater or whatever, <clears throat> they don't consider the ongoing monthly uh, gas consumption or ongoing monthly electrical consumption. And that's part of the purchase price. So be smart. Best of luck. Thanks for your viewership and y'all have a good day. Hey y'all, I Rick Sky here. I hope you enjoyed this video and please be sure to subscribe to my channel and when you do, ring that bell icon to be notified whenever I post another video. Thanks for your viewership and y'all have a good day.